Okay, so hello guys. Uh, good morning, good evening. So as most of you know me, my name is uh, Ashish and uh, I would like to start with the introduction. So I have a total of 16 years of experience in SAP. Out of that, uh, in the last eight years, I have working in the EWM space. So I'm working for uh, one of the MNCs in the EWM implementation and uh, also providing the EWM trainings and uh, interview assistance uh, from the last uh, more than eight years, more than five years. And uh, so today will be our demo session and uh, then the regular batches uh, is going to start from next Saturday. And uh, some of you have already uh, enrolled for the sessions in the upcoming batch. So, right, so in the demo, we will go through the short PPT where I will explain you about the EWM concept at the high level. And then we will go through the course content and uh, I will explain you about uh, the relevance of each and every topic in the warehousing. And then uh, we will be having a short, uh, you know, test in the system. And at any point of time, in case you have any questions, feel free to ask. So let me know if you are able to see my screen. Okay, so EWM, as you know, it is uh, the extended warehouse management and it is the application provided by SAP. And earlier SAP had a WM application and the WM application, it was a very, very basic. It was not uh, fulfilling the warehousing requirements. That is the reason uh, SAP was losing the business in the warehousing space and uh, the competitors were Oracle, Marathon and the different warehousing applications. And then the SAP came up with EWM sometime in uh, the 2010 uh, around, but initially due to the complexity and uh, non-availability of uh, the theory for the EWM, it was uh, not very hit, but later on, uh, organizations uh, started implementing the EWM from 2014. Then when the S4 HANA came in in the SAP, uh, the latest technology, then the EWM was a very big hit. And then SAP is going to sunset uh, the WM application. And uh, then the organizations are rushing to migrate from WM to EWM. And all the new implementations are in the EWM only. So in case of... Uh, I mean, EWM provides uh, the simple solution as well as complex solution. For a simple warehouse, say you have a small warehouse of two, three racks. There also you can implement EWM. And if you have a very complex warehouse, right? Suppose you have a warehouse having a same automobile. You have uh, 10 levels of parking. You have different spare parts. So that level of complexity as well, you can implement EWM. So this is the basic organization process uh, in any uh, organization. This is the end-to-end -end supply chain. If we see here, you it is not in the SAP, right? When you, I mean, the key to success is that you think from the business point of view. In any organization, say manufacturing side, you have this supply chain. If we talk about the company like Nestle, right? Nestle, you know, right? Everybody knows Nestle. It is... Uh, the chief producing company and it is uh, located across the globe. So they, if we talk about, or if you visualize what the Nestle would be doing, they are procuring the milk, right? They are procuring the milk, using the milk in the production lines, and then they are producing the final cheese products. Correct? This is the end-to-end high-level supply chain process. Now, if we think in terms of SAP, when you procure the milk, that is SAP MM, material management. So here you are procuring the milk and when you receive the milk, then you store it in the warehouse, which is MM EWM integration. Procurement, material management, after receiving, if you are storing it in the warehouse, it will be EWM. Then if it is stored in the warehouse, milk products are stored in the warehouse. So you will withdraw the milk in your production lines. Right, you will procure milk, sugar, other ingredients from different different vendors, and then store it in the warehouse. Withdraw from the warehouse, 
to use it in the production lines and produce the cheese product. So when you procure the milk, it is MM, EWM integration. When you use the milk in the production lines, it is PP, EWM integration. And when you ship the milk, uh, cheese product, right? You use the milk, consume the milk in the production lines and produce cheese product. That happens in all the manufacturing sites. You use raw materials and produce the final product, finished product. So when you produce finished product, you further store it in the warehouse and then you ship it to the customer from there. That is HD EWM integration. Now, if you think about the organization structure, then we have a plant and the storage location in the ERP site. So in case of no EWM, you store the products. Okay, I mean, some of you might have no experience in SAP. So I will just start. Uh, okay, this is uh, just a spreadsheet in my last uh, training session where we have explained about uh, the concept of EWM and all these different high-level processes. Okay, now if you see, suppose you know the Walmart store, right? This is a Walmart store. Assuming that this is a Walmart store and here you have different racks in the Walmart store. So in this area, if you go to the Walmart store, what you are doing, you, are, you see that they are storing cloths. In this area, they are storing, say, food products. Right? Don't, don't think about uh, SAP. Just visualize from the warehouse point of view, from the Walmart store point of view. So if you visualize from the business point of view, then it will be easy for you to correlate what how to map the SAP solutions with their business. Now, in the food products, suppose you have the vegetarian section. Or you can say you have a vegetable section and you have a fruit section. And in the fruit section, in this area, you are storing, suppose, apples. Here you are storing mangoes, etc. Right? Now, when you receive something from the vendor, suppose you have received one carton of apples. So what will happen? Truck will come here. Truck will stand here and then you will unload apples. So one carton of apple you have received here. And then you will store this apple. What will happen? The warehouse worker will take these apples, the carton containing 100 apples, and store it in the designated space. This is the process in the Walmart store, just at the high level. Now, this area in EWM is called as a storage type. So if you see EWM, organization structure, this is the organization structure of EWM. You have a warehouse. Within the warehouse, you have a storage type. And then storage types are further divided into storage section. And the last spot where you are storing the product is your storage pin. So if you think from this direction, you have this as a storage type, right? Storage type is divided into two storage sections. One for the vegetables, other for the fruits. And the last spot where you are storing the product is your storage pin. Storage pin, this is your storage section. And this one is your storage type. This is the high level organization structure in EWM. Now, going two steps back, this is the organization structure on the ERP side. Now, what is the difference between EWM and the process without EWM? So if you already working in the SAP, you know that EWM is not mandatory and you can manage using non-EWM as well. So this is the non-EWM. If you have no EWM, see again, 
think from the business, Walmart is still operating like this. Doesn't matter, you have SAP, you have Oracle, you have EWM or you have no EWM. The Walmart stores will be doing the business like this only. They receive the product, one carton, they will store it in the warehouse. When they receive the order from the customer, they withdraw it and then they will load into the truck and ship it to the customer. In case of no EWM, you manage the inventory at the storage location level. So this is your storage location. Okay. You create a purchase order for milk or you here you create a purchase order for apple. Vendor will be shipping the apple and you will be receiving the apple in the system. That means the moment you have unloaded one carton of apples from the truck, there is no further direction from the system side. You can store, the warehouse worker can take this carton and he don't know where to store. He need to just do it on his own. There is no direction from the system. But in case of EWM, the system will direct the worker to take the carton and store it in the bin. Okay. Now, here we have ERP and we have EWM. So if we talk about non-EWM, you manage the inventory at the storage location level. So if you see the stock, suppose you have received two cartons, two cartons of apple you have received and one carton you are storing here and other carton you are storing here. So when you have no EWM, then in the system you will see the inventory as two cartons. But in case you have EWM, then the warehouse will be able to see one carton is stored in pin one and the other carton is stored in pin B. Okay, to give you other, another example, just uh, think of, suppose uh, you are located in California, right? You are located in Sunnyvale. Now I am in India and you are inviting me to your place in Sunnyvale. So in case there is no EWM, then system will direct me to take a flight from Mumbai to New York and find out your place on my own. That means there is no further directions in case of non-EWM. I will take a flight from Mumbai to New York, that's it, and find out on my own. But in case of EWM, system will direct me to take a flight from Mumbai to New York, take a local flight there after two hours from New York to California, go outside of the airport and take a taxi to the Sunnyvale. So that is the difference. So most of you might be wondering why we need EWM because the process is a bit complex here in the EWM and in the non-EWM, you can simply post one transaction. So that is the difference. Don't think about system standpoint, Think about business standpoint. Any questions anyone has? Okay, so here we manage the inventory at the storage location level in case of no EWM. In case you have EWM, then the storage location is the link to your warehouse. In case of no EWM, this is called as a storage location. Okay, this is the entire warehouse is called as a storage location. In case of EWM, this warehouse is called as a warehouse where you have further division of the warehouse. Okay, so if we go one step further, this is the warehouse structure. You receive the apple here from the vendor. Here you have done the unloading, right? The truck comes here, then the warehouse worker will unload the products and the other set of worker will place the products here. Then you receive the order from the customer. So somebody will 
withdraw the apple from here right and put it here in this area then the next truck will come here and you will load the apple in this truck so here you will do the loading and here you will do the unloading okay truck and here you will do the unloading and here you will be having the outbound truck now if you see this structure you have a storage type right every element here this place is also called as a storage type but the storage type is a door where the truck comes this is also called as a storage type where the storage type is called as a staging area that is a temporary you are putting the product here this is also called as a storage type where you are actually storing the product so here in this structure you will see you have a door having a storage type this one unload the product in the staging area and this one is your pins where you are actually storing the product in the outbound you withdraw from the pin and move it in the outbound staging area where the outbound truck will be standing and you will load into the truck outbound means anything going out of the warehouse inbound means anything coming in the warehouse and this is called as a work center where you will be doing the additional activity on the pallet before storing in the bin. This is the work center in the outbound space where you will be doing the packing, repacking as per the customer requirement. Okay, suppose in a carton you received 100 apples and 100 potatoes. Now, as per our storage requirements, potatoes will be stored in a different section. Apples will be stored in a different section. So, you will take the carton in this area and you will split the carton as per your storage requirement. Similarly, if the customer wants 50 apples and 50 mangoes, then you will pack in a one carton and then ship it to the customer. Okay, so this is the inbound process. When we have a purchase order, we have the inbound delivery. That means you create a purchase order for procuring 100 apples. Then vendor will ship the product. Shipping from the vendor will trigger the shipping notification, which is called as an inbound delivery in the ERP side. This inbound delivery will create another inbound delivery in the EWM. And then in the outbound process, when you receive the order from the customer, you have the sales order where you create the outbound delivery. <coughs> Suppose you your customer requested for 100 apples and 100 mangoes. So sales order will be created. With reference to that, the outbound delivery will be created and the worker is going to take the apple, which is called as a picking process in the EWM. This outbound delivery will create another outbound delivery in EWM. And this inbound delivery in EWM and outbound delivery order in EWM are also called as a warehouse request. Warehouse request because inbound delivery requesting warehouse for certain activities. Outbound delivery, also warehouse request, requesting warehouse for this activity. And this is called as a warehouse task. This is a warehouse task, which contains the information of your goods movement from where to take, where to place, how many units, which product, which batch, all this information will be in your warehouse task. So here you can see the warehouse task in the inbound where the source is your good receipt area where we have done the unloading and the destination, it will be determined based on your different strategies. Okay, and similarly in the outbound side, you have a warehouse task 
where the source will be determined based on your picking strategies, like first in, first out. Whichever apple carton you have received first, that you want to withdraw first. Whichever is expiring first, that you want to withdraw first. These are your picking strategies. And there are different more picking strategies. Okay, so this warehouse tasks are clubbed together in a warehouse order. And warehouse order is the work package for the employee. I am assigning this warehouse order to you and you are responsible to execute the task which is linked to the order. Okay, so it is just like if you have a different resources. You have a forklift operator and you have a regular resource like you and me without any vehicle or forklift. So if I am there in the warehouse, then I have a capacity of only one carton. So the task will be created for one carton and the order will be created. Having this task, the order will be assigned to me. In case you have multiple resources, say forklift operator, the forklift operator has a capacity to hold multiple cartons. So the multiple warehouse task of all these cartons will be bundled together in a one warehouse order, which will be assigned to the forklift operator. Okay, so these are, these warehouse orders are created based on the warehouse order creation rules. And this will be in the advanced EWM topics. Then the wave management is also there, where in case you want, uh, say you have received the order of uh, 100 apples and for one uh, customer, 100 apples for other customer. So the warehouse worker will go into the warehouse and pick all the 300 together and then segregate. Then we have a data transfer method, how the data will be transferred between ERP and EWM. And then in the ERP, you have a movement type. In EWM, we have a process type. Process type is responsible for all the goods movement. The packing information, if you want to pack 100 apples in one carton, or you want to pack 100 apples in one carton, and then four such cartons you want to pack in a pallet. So all the packing requirements will be solution using packaging specification. Then you have a yard management, which is about the truck movement. We talked about door, right? We have talked about this door where the truck comes. Now what will happen in case you have three doors and 10 trucks are coming at a time? How you are going to manage the truck movements? That will be in the yard management. Any questions guys? Anyone, any questions? I will just uh, pause here for two minutes. In case you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, so our uh, training sessions will be in the S4 HANA 2022, which is the latest version of S4 HANA. That is the embedded EWM. And there we will start uh, creating the warehouse right from scratch. So we will create a brand new warehouse and then we will set up the integration between ERP and EWM. Then we will create all the structural elements like the storage type, storage sections. We have the warehouse process types, which is about the goods movement. First we will post the basic inbound and basic outbound without handling units, then we will set up the handling units. So handling unit is about the different pallets, different crates, whatever you have, just to give you the idea. Okay, so these are the called as the different handling units. In case you are receiving a milk pallet, milk uh, pouch, then you will use the plastic pallet. You will put the milk in the 
plastic pallets. If you are receiving, say, any uh, glass uh, products, then you may use the wooden pallet to give the solid packing. You have the cartons, all these are the different handling units. And then we will do the good received and goods issue with handling unit. Now the entire course, you can say it is categorized into three levels. Level one, which is the basics of EWM. All the basic granular level details we are going to cover in the basics of EWM. Where we will be completing the basic inbound end-to-end -end and the outbound end-to-end -end process. Once you are comfortable in the level one complexity, and also the level one is the prerequisite to go into the level two, where we have the packaging specification, how we are going to pack the product, warehouse order creations, how you are going to create the order to assign it to the forklift operator or to the vehicle person on the vehicle or to the regular people. Then we have the internal warehouse movements. You want to move the stock or the pallet or the carton from one bin to another. You notice that one of the carton is damaged. So how you want to block the carton, how you want to scrap the carton. When you receive from the vendor, it will go into the quality inspection. You will do the quality testing and then if it is cleared in the quality, then you will move it in the available status. If it is failed in the quality, then it will go into the block status. That will be the internal posting changes. Physical inventory, it is like uh, the inventory counting, which is a prerequisite. Then we have the post-processing framework where we will see about the label printing, how you will automate the process, how you will print the different labels. Wave, we have already seen the PPT. Storage control, that is about this one. This, 8010. You receive a carton containing apples and potatoes. You want to split the carton. The carton will be going into the work center. So we have the storage control. That is the, having more complexity. Yard management for the truck movement. Resource management. Multiple resources are there. You have forklift operator. You have conveyor. You have a regular person. You have a person uh, riding the vehicle. So different type of resources are there. How you are going to manage the resources. Queue management. Now, if you see here, you have a task created for the inbound. You have a task created for the outbound. At a time, you might be having 100 different tasks. So how you will make sure the right task will be assigned to the right resource at the right time? That you will see in the queue management and the resource management. So whatever activities we have done until now, that we will do it in the RF later on. First, we will set up in the GUI in the system, and then we will go into the more practical approach where you have seen the worker will be having the RF device, the gun. You might have seen the gun, right? When you go to the Walmart store, the person scan the barcode at the, in the billing counter. So the same type of gun, similar kind of gun will be used in the warehouse where the worker will be scanning the label and completing the inbound and outbound process. Okay, so you receive one carton, you print the label, put it on the carton, you scan the label, and system will direct you to put this in the bin. So the worker will go here and scan the bin label to complete this process. If the worker tries to put the carton here or here, he will have to scan the label here and system will throw the error because this is not the bin determined by the system. That we will see in the RF setup. We will set up the RF ID right from scratch and complete the inbound, outbound, all the warehouse process in the RF. And then we have a cross docking. Cross docking means when you receive the carton containing apples 
and you have the outbound requirement for the Apple. So without storing this in the warehouse, you will direct from unloading area to the loading area. This is your cross talk. So I could see a couple of questions here in the chat window. In case you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, so we will be having this S4 HANA 2022 server. So I will be sharing the server details with uh, everyone. And uh, the training sessions, it will be for two or two and a half months. And then you will get the server details. And then you can do the practice there. And uh, immediately after the session, within half an hour, I will share the recordings. So you can refer the recordings. In the recordings, you will see whatever transactions we have posted in the system. You can refer that and you can do the practice on your own. And then every session, we will be starting with Q&A. In case you have any questions in the previous sessions, you can always ask me. Even if you are in the 10th session and you have questions on the second session, then you can always ask me. Now, again, before we go into the EWM, we will start with the basics of SAP. That means the next two sessions, because not everybody uh, is in the SAP. You might be starting. Not everybody is in the SAP, right? This, is, this might be your... Uh, first learning in the SAP. So I will start with the overview of SAP and I will give you the high level idea of all the different modules in the SAP in the next two sessions, that is next Saturday and next Sunday, 16th and 17th. Okay, so we will talk about the different modules of SAP. I will show you in the system how we can post, how can we can create the purchase order, how we can configure the organization structure, right? So if we see, we have the organization structure. So we will start with organization structure. I will explain you how we can set up in the system. Then we can create the data. We can create the purchase order. We will start with the basics of MM. We will do the basics of HD. Then you will be having one week to do the practice in the system. And then we will start with the basics of EWM. Okay. Any questions, anyone? Guys, I mean, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can ask the question. You don't need to put here in the chat window. Directly, you can ask the questions. So, Ashish, do we have simple uh, SQL commands in SAP or uh, uh, it is forbidden to have SQL commands? No, see, this is the functional training. Right, okay. so we are not going to do any kind of coding. Okay, because there are two aspects here. If you see, you have the SAP ABAP module as well, right? So when we talk about, next week we will talk about the different modules at the high level. So you have SAP ABAP. So these are the guys who will be doing the coding in the system. They don't care about the business. They don't care about the uh, how the business functions. They are simply kind of robots. Whatever functional team are telling them, they are doing the coding. So we will not have this training. We will be doing the training on EWM. And in the EWM, the prerequisite, we have the MM. So we will start with the creation of the purchase order, sales order, where it will be a kind of functional training. You will visualize from the business standpoint. Okay, so this is the system, what we will be having. This is uh, S4 HANA 2022. You can see here the system details and uh, you will be getting the remote uh, server desktop. You don't need to install any software in your uh, laptop. 
you can directly connect to the remote desktop and here we will uh, i will simply run one process okay i will just take any existing data So this is the existing purchase order which is created. Okay, so here we can see the organization structure. That means if you need to create a new purchase order, what we have, this will be done by the SAP MM team. I will guide you on using the different transactions. So what you want to suppose this is Apple, right? For Apple or for every product, we have a material created in the system. So this is the material. We will be having text, Apple, that will be the master data. If you want to create, you want to procure 100 units of Apple from this vendor, then we will create a purchase order. Okay, now you have multiple plans, right? You have multiple plans. Say Nestle or Walmart store, you have multiple Walmart store. Which store is placing the order? that will be your plant name. This plant is placing the order. Who is the purchase organization responsible for procurement of this plant? And it is in which company code? Now, if you think in terms of business language, Okay, now you can see it is not red. That means we are good to create a purchase order. So if you have already experience in MM, you already know this, but if you are a fresher, I know some of you are freshers, fresher in SAP. So if we think in terms of business language, this product that is Apple, you have raised a request to this vendor this Walmart store has raised a request. Okay, you have Walmart store in UK, you have Walmart store in US. In US, you have Walmart store in Dallas. Now, if Dallas is raising a request, this purchasing organization is responsible for procurement of all the products for this plant. Of course, right? If you have a plant in Dallas, it is obvious that a purchasing organization, somebody, the purchasing body will be in nearby Dallas. So that is the purchasing organization. And the company code, it is created for the US. That means this is the US entity. It is not like the plant is in the US, somebody in India is raising an order for the US plant and this uh, is for the Europe. It is not like this. It is as simple as your plant is in the Dallas, so you are Purchasing division is nearby Dallas and this Dallas is in US. Okay, so 100 units of Apple to be procured at 10 euro per piece or per unit. Okay, euro here is a currency. So because it's coming from the plant address. So in this example, I have given you the uh, a reference of Dallas, but the plant is in the Germany. So this body is in Germany and the company code is Germany. Okay. So this is the purchase order which we have created. And when vendor ship the product, delivery date is 9th, 12th, that is 9th of December. And when vendor is shipping 100 units of Apple, what is happening? We have the inbound delivery. Okay, inbound delivery means something is coming in the warehouse. Now, here you can see the storage location. Storage location is the controlling factor. If your storage location is non-EWM managed, you post the good receipt here. 
there is no warehouse number. What I have explained, you receive the product and there is no further direction from the system. You receive it here, no further direction from the system in case of non-EWM. In case of EWM, if the storage location is EWM managed, then you can see this is the warehouse number. And this process is ERP and the inbound delivery is distributed in the EWM. ERP means all your supply chain modules. EWM exclusively your warehousing module. Okay, so when we go here in the EWM, the same inbound delivery, you can see it is creating another inbound delivery in this warehouse. So here you are doing the good receipt. That means you have done the unloading here. When you complete the good receipt, what will happen? The warehouse task will be created after that. Okay, you can see the inbound delivery is called as a warehouse request, requesting warehouse for certain activities. Which activities? That will be in the warehouse task. So here you can see the warehouse task would be created. And every task is linked to the order. Now, if you see, you have received 100 apples, in case of no EWM, you can receive directly from here. But in case of EWM, we have received in the EWM and then this is the next warehouse task which is created that is to move from your good receipt area to the intermediate area to the final pin. Okay, and this is the order. This order we will assign to this resource who is responsible for the inbound operations. So the resource will take this carton, scan the carton in this area. He will, this is your carton 160, that is a carton number. He will scan it here. And then he will go here in this area and he will scan the pin. So in case of GUI, you can do confirm plus save here. But in case you have a handheld device, then we have the RF. Okay, so here you can see the RF where inbound process, what you are doing, you are doing the put away in the put away by warehouse order. And what the worker will do, he will scan the warehouse order label where the system will tell him to scan the source pin. He will scan it here. He will scan the source at you. The purpose of scanning is, he is taking up the right carton. He is pulling the right carton from the right bin. And once he scan the right carton in the right bin, he will go to the destination. Okay, so currently this RF process is not set up here. He will go to the destination and in the destination, he will do the same thing. Any questions? Okay, so this we have already covered here in the RFID setup and in the resource and queue management. So let me know guys, in case you have any questions. In case you have any questions on the timing or the course approach or anything, feel free to ask. So are all the sessions gonna be uh, 7 a.m. Uh, PSD? Yes, uh, it will be 7 a.m. PST, which will be, I think, 8 
after am cst right 7 am pst to 9 am pst so both saturday and sunday correct right saturday 2 hours sunday 2 hours because throughout the week you can do the practice and again in case everybody in the batch uh, wanted to change the timings i am very much flexible in that and this uh, 7 am pst it will be 8 30 pm ist so looking at uh, the availability of uh, the candidates across the globe uh, this timing uh, tentatively i have proposed but uh, it will be either 7 am pst or it will be 7 30 not uh, beyond that that means 8 30 to 10 30 pm ist or 9 to 11 ist Okay, and uh, two hours Saturday, two hours Sunday, and the total uh, course is uh, close to 40 hours, and that will uh, be around two and a half months. So every, uh, after completing every session, I will share the recording immediately. And then you can go through the recordings. And in case you have any questions, you can ask me in the subsequent sessions. And in case you miss any session and uh, you have the recordings with you, but if you have any questions, you can always ask me. Okay. And uh, other than this, uh, I will be helping you in preparing the resume and also later on, any interview preparations or job support as well, whenever required. So in a batch, I'm accommodating uh, maximum eight candidates uh, because I mean, just wanted to focus on each and every one. Don't want to just go through it and dilute the purpose. And uh, six people have already enrolled. So the moment we have two more, we will freeze the batch and will not take any further enrollments. I mean, some of you could not get the slot in the last batch, and that's why you have joined uh, this uh, the upcoming batch. Okay, and we will, uh, it is not like if you don't have experience in MAM or don't have experience in SAP, then you will be at the back seat. EWM, even if you have uh, 20 years of experience in MMHD, still you are a fresher in EWM. Because EWM, the navigation is different, transactions are different, terminologies are different, the concept is different, everything is different. So we have seen that the people joining like as if they have 15 years of experience so they can easily grasp the EWM, they are even finding it challenging as compared to the freshers. And when you appear for the interview, then your EWM in Experience matters, EWM knowledge matters. So don't worry that uh, if you are a fresher, then uh, you will uh, be getting uh, the secondary preference in the job market. It is not like this. Everybody who has no experience in EWM so far will be fresher in EWM. Even if you have MM experience, I mean, if you have MM, you will slightly get an edge in terms of SAP navigation, how to access, how to post the transactions in the system. Okay, so Javed, as per your question, you are asking how many years of EWM experience employers typically look for. Okay, see, again, if you are applying for a full-time permanent position in the organization, then they will do your background verification. But uh, if you are in the US, most of the people uh, would prefer to join uh, in a contract. And if you're in a contract, then you can even put 10 years of experience in the EWM. That should be fine. And uh, they are not going to do any background verification. So, but at least, I mean, you can put three to four years of experience. And the good thing is that even the interviewer might not be so expert in EWM. So he will simply ask you the EWM terminologies, EWM processes that we are going to learn in the session. I will also give you the real-time scenarios and uh, 
the issues which are coming across in the projects so that you will be uh, better prepared for the interviews. Okay, and uh, there is one more question. If uh, we have any option to fast track this patch. See, again, as I said, EWM is uh, complex, little bit of complex, right? See, it is a complex, that's why it is a niche and not everybody is in the EWM and even the in, the organizations are finding it challenging to find the good EWM resource. If it is a simple like MMNHD, then every second person in the SAP will be MMNHD, right? So you will not get uh, that much uh, importance and rates. So doing the fast track session will not be helpful because uh, you need some time to do the practice and uh, get yourself comfortable with the terminologies, with the process, with the system, and with the application. So initially, I mean, once we complete our, say, Saturday and Sunday sessions, then we will find uh, one week uh, as well, little less to do the practice. Okay, any further questions? Okay, guys, so if uh, no further questions, then maybe I will uh, send you, I mean, whoever has enrolled, I will send you the uh, meeting invitation, the recurring meeting invite uh, starting 16th of December. And the first session, it will be, uh, John, as you said, 7 a.m. PST, which will be 8.30 p.m. IST, 7 a.m. a.m. PST in the morning hours and 8.30 p.m. IST in the evening hours. So that I will send and then uh, to the uh, guys who have already enrolled. Okay, and those who have not enrolled, I mean, if you want to enroll, just two, two spots are available. In case you want, you can uh, confirm your enrollment. And then once uh, the two spots are filled, then uh, I will not uh, entertain any further enrollments. Because just as I said, I would like to focus on each and every one all the eight candidates in the session to get them ready for the EWM job market. Okay, so if no further questions, then I will share this recording and uh, with your institutes in case you have joined through the institutes. And in case you have joined, uh, I mean, I already have your email IDs, then I will share directly with you guys. Okay. Okay, guys, then thanks for uh, joining the session and uh, we can close for the day and uh, talk to you on next Saturday. Thank you, Ashish, for your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining.